December 24th, 2020, 11.59 p.m. You've been waiting over two years for a new album from Playboy Cardi. The clock finally strikes midnight. You immediately check to see if Cardi was telling the truth about dropping music for once. Surprisingly, he was. Whole lot of red actually dropped. You press play and give it a listen. Yo, what am I hearing right now? This the same Playboy Cardi? Hey, nah, this is kinda fire. Oh no, all my friends hate it already. Whole lot of mid starts trending. Nah, okay, this is hard. Or is it? Whole lot of red was met with some of the most mixed reviews I've ever seen. Some people loved it right away, while others were calling it the worst album they'd ever heard. Even the Cardi fanbase was split down the middle. However, now over two years later, Whole lot of red is honestly one of the most influential albums of the last decade. Today it seems like almost every rapper, especially in the underground, has been influenced at least a little by Playboy Cardi in this project in some way. From his minimalistic flows and ad-libs, which even NBA Youngboy has been trying, to the way he dresses, the way he performs, and definitely by the way Cardi brought these aggressive rage beats to the mainstream with Whole Lotta Red, which has helped artists like Yeet spark entire careers off of the massive influence of Playboy Cardi's Whole Lotta Red, and it goes beyond just the music. But even the leaks for this album were insane, with some of the most legendary snippets like Molly, Cancun, Neon, and Pissy Pamper, which somehow reached number one on the Spotify charts after a random fan uploaded the leak. Clearly, the hype was huge for new music from Atlanta rapper Playboy Cardi, as fans knew every lyric to his unreleased songs. So then when he finally released his second studio album on Christmas of 2020, Whole Lotta Red would become Cardi's first number one album of his career. Executive produced by Kanye West, who apparently is also on King Vamp shit, and at a total of 24 tracks fans were stunned upon first listen. Whole Lotta Red sounded totally different from anything else we were hearing in hip hop at the time, which is what made the album so special. You can't put me in a genre, Cardi says. From the straight-in-your-face production to the over-the-top abrasive lyrics, nobody was expecting this punk rock-inspired sound from Cardi after hearing the leaks we were getting, or following his previous album, Die Lit, which also had a pretty unique sound for its time. Aside from the track Sky, which is one of the few that sounds like it could have also made it on Die Lit, the rest of Whole Lotta Red is basically just aggressive rage songs. This is definitely a soundtrack, you know, a nigga who steals kids' bikes would be listening to while he's doing it. It was a very big artistic risk for Playboy Cardi, switching up his sound while at the biggest point of his career. I don't give a damn and everyone knows that. But again, it didn't really catch on at first. However, I think Cardi knew this was going to happen. Whole Lotta Red is an album not meant to be listened to in your room by yourself. Don't get me wrong, I've definitely done this. But what I mean is this project was made to be performed live. Hey yo, fuck you Cardi, I can't go nowhere. What do you mean jump out the house? A year into its release, this album had never been played in front of a live physical audience. With it being the first year of the COVID pandemic and many restrictions still in place, it wasn't until Cardi started performing Whole Lotta Red that the album became widely accepted. Now, I use the term perform lightly, because Playboy Cardi's shows are more of him just screaming a few words here and there. But regardless, he puts on one of the most hype concerts today. So then when he was finally able to tour and play Whole Lotta Red on stage, opinions quickly changed, as fans started appreciating the album for what it was. My first thought after listening was, I gotta see this live. Along with the help of a few TikTok trends, Whole Lotta Red would even re-enter the Billboard 200 six months after its release, and saw a 129% increase in sales. The Narcissus Tour later named King Vamp Tour began in October of 2021 and seemed to go viral about every week as people were just excited to be outside again. Some maybe a little too excited. This video shows a crowd chanting Cardi at NRG Arena last night. It was chaos. It was like a war zone, honestly. It was mosh pits, fights, everything. 
and we definitely can't forget his 2021 Lollapalooza set, the first time he debuted the album live, as Miley Cyrus fans got pissed while they waited for her to perform after, and weren't aware of the crowd Playboy Cardi brings. Stop Breathing, a track that honestly deserves its own subgenre. With production by Filthy S Sword and Lucrative, these compressed 808s paired with lyrics about Cardi's gang life make Stop Breathing one of the most energetic songs of all time. Although one that few can actually relate to, well besides taking your shirt off and ho Stop Breathing, but all can mosh to. However, it's important to note that Cardi wasn't the first artist to experiment with rage beats, despite being the one responsible for popularizing them in the mainstream. Rage beats or rage music is a term given to this new subgenre of trap developed in the early 2020s. Heavily influenced by EDM, rage beats are characterized by hard hitting trap drums and aggressive repetitive synths. There is always talk about who actually started rapping over them first. Was it fellow opium artist Ken Carson with his track Yale, Sofago with Off the Map, or maybe even Uno the Activist, who has tracks you could definitely label as rage dating back to 2018. But the name itself stems from Trippy Red's song Miss the Rage, also featuring Playboy Cardi. Miss the Rage and Off the Map are two prime examples of what a rage beat sounds like by definition, but low key they can sometimes be hard to define. So while there's definitely a couple by definition on Whole Lotta Red, I also wouldn't say it's full of your standard rage beats you typically hear today, although it has inspired the vigorous tone most now include in 2023. However, despite Cardi deserving credit for pioneering these beats as well as his flow which fits perfectly with them, we also have to give credit to his producers, who play a huge role in this too. Wake up, filthy. Filthy, one of the main influences behind this new sound, has production credits on six tracks off Whole Lotta Red, Cardi's creative director and producer Art Dealer has seven, as well as Starboy and Out of Town are also heard frequently throughout this project. Then of course we must mention Cardi's frequent collaborator Pierre Bourne, whose 808s and drum patterns have undoubtedly helped inspire this new wave. Yo Pierre, you wanna come out here? <laughs> But today you can hear Playboy Cardi and Whole Lotta Red's influence in so many rappers, especially in the underground. The entire underground scene has thrived as a result of this sound hitting the mainstream. It was already gaining a little momentum in that scene, but Whole Lotta Red made it cool and popular with the general audience. Like being around Cardi taught me how to rap over trap beats. Remember I used to make music like Chance the Rapper and them kind of like in that lane. Although you could argue his sound was headed this direction prior, Yeet is another rapper to skyrocket his career off of this wave, to the point where I'd say he's no longer underground. Check out my Yeet video if you don't know who Yeet is. However, there's no denying that Yeet has also been inspired by Playboy Cardi in this album. He literally dropped a remix of May, as well as his beats for Turban and Trendy Way were actually whole lot of red tight beats from YouTube. Now with up and coming artists like Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely under Cardi's Opium label, along with mainstream names like Trippy Red and NBA Youngboy for example. <laughs> Rage has been dominating this new decade of hip-hop, thanks again in large part to these producers as well. However, too much of something can often be bad. Project X, Trip at Night, Up to Me, Too Alive, Year of the Ox, Life in Hell, Homicide Lifestyle, No Stylist. These are just a few of the many Rage-inspired projects to follow in Whole of Red's footsteps. Although it does appear that Playboy Cardi will be switching up his sound yet again on his upcoming album. As of the time I'm recording this, we have no idea when Cardi's next album is gonna drop, or even if it will ever drop. But from the little information we get, it appears like the project will be again a different sound than we're used to, as well as heavily inspired by Lil Wayne. He's doing completely different. His whole shit that he's doing again is going to shock people. 
The massive influence that Whole Lotta Red has had on hip-hop in the past two years is undeniable. It goes beyond just the music and has inspired a new generation of artists that borrow from its ideas. In a time when so much music is being released and very little seems to stick, the fact that we're still talking about it over two years later says something. Although still too early to label this album as a classic, or maybe even as Cardi's best work, its impact has already been huge. Whole lot of red seems to be appreciated more and more as time goes on.